why Nigerians are waiting to see if truly Nigerian football will be starting the game this year. We're actually waiting, according to the news page we in, that probably that could be having uh, to see the light of the day when that particular day will come. Well, we're waiting for that. Welcome here on the show, 360 Sport on Trust TV. I am Ademi Aji Shafer. We start with the first story. Nigerian Professional Football League will start on 28 December 2022 because news uh, says that uh, they could be meeting with the club owners and also the clubs to see if they can find soon the draw and from there they will start the league. Well, it's still maybe probability, yes or no. Uh, from the way it is, we are waiting to see what could be happening concerning that particular story that has to do with the Nigerian professional football league. The ladies right now, they are in their third week. In fact, they played the third week on Wednesday, and right now the men are yet to start, and we know what the result of this could be when it comes to the CAF Confederation and also CAF Champions League, uh, where we always lag behind when it comes to performing well at the Continental uh, Intercontinental Club uh, fixtures there. Well, we just have to look at that particular story with Olale Peter. is here. Let's talk about this particular story. Yeah. Um, good evening, Adini. It's mm. a pleasure to be back to the studio. Yeah, it's, um, it's very important for us to look into it. And it's very important for us to look into what other African countries are doing so that when it is time for the CAF Confedera Confederation or Champions League, mm. we will not be still be playing our own league while other, other, um, other leagues, they've concluded, they've finished, they know who is going to represent Same. them. Mm. So we will not have the case that we had in which Kuala United had to be taken. So we should try as much as possible to plan adequately and plan very well. We shouldn't work hard alone. We should work in line with other African countries because of this Champions League. If you look at the hero, if champ, uh, Premier League they are starting this Saturday, it's just a week in between Premier League, champ, uh, La Liga, and Serie A. Because of this Champions League, uh, UEFA, and Europa Conference League, so that everything will work simultaneously. I think we need to look into that. Mm. There's no need for us to be in hurry to start the league when we are not really prepared. I also hope that the um, a new NFL executive, they've looked into the three highs of the football administration. That is the investment, the incentive, and the infrastructure to be sure that we are well prepared for this NPFL. I mean, infrastructure, I hope they've gone around to look at all the studios to be sure that we are really ready to do this and to do it well this time around. Then we are talking about the invest investment. We will stop talking about this. I think um, this, uh, this coming season, we'll have only one private owned football club among the 20 teams. Mm. And that is only Remo Star, owned by the owner of um, Bet Niger, who happens to be the first Nigerian to own a club in Europe. He has a club in Europe. Of course, in, in Portugal. In Portugal also. So it's going to be the only one. Others are owned by the government. And we all know what most of the state governors, they are going through currently now, financially. So that also we need to look into that. Then come to the third, the third one, invest, I mean, incentive. Like we have in Cameroon and some other African clubs and countries, we should have a minimum wage for, Set our, for the players. our players also, that no club should pay more than so 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 amount for the players. Or less than. Or less than hmm. for the players. When it comes to uh, the maximum, you can pay. Whatever you want, you can afford. You can, you can even pay them what they are paying Ronaldo, Messi, <laughs> Mbappe. If you have, if you have the I money. I doubt if you have that team in Africa. <laughs> but we should not be paying them 20, 30, 40 p notes. Hmm. That needs to be looked into. The issue of owing them salaries for three, four, five months also. That needs to be looked into also. Their welfare, when they travel, the means of transportation, when they travel, how they travel, where they stay, that also needs to be looked into inside the incentive. So the three highs, the infrastructure, the investment, and uh, incentive. the incentive. I hope the current NFF executive have looked into that before they can start announcing that we are starting the NPFL. And another one that's very, very important, like we saw, the canopillars. Mm. in which uh, we are currently doing a documentary on it. The, uh, the last three points based on what happened, and that's one of the reasons why they, re uh, they went to relegation. 
So I hope the NFF executive also the put mayor in place that any act of oli uh, oligarchism and oligarchism in the field of play, either by the player, by the management, management or by the supporters, automatically three points. And you should there even be room for appeal at all. I hope we have that in place. I also hope we have in place adequate security mail in place for all the visiting teams when they are playing. I hope all these are in place. These are the things that we should be talking about. These are the things that they should show all that they've drawn before we can talk of coming uh, of the commencement of, of, the league. The, of the league. If we don't have all these in places and we are just rushing, we're just rushing, we rush out, they will suspend the league, we have issue here, we have issue there. I don't have a problem if we start in January. I don't have a problem if we as start... As long as we can We meet can up. Meet, meet up the deadline for the CAF and the Confederation Cup. And also, you have to look at the welfare of these people. If you can have that, do that, I think we are good to go. Now, uh, talking about the particular one you just mentioned, if it's generated to, uh, to, to when they when actually want to play. But news came out that it could be an abridged league that could end in May, when you have, uh, uh, when you have uh, maybe six or, or ten here, ten here, they play mm -hmm. themselves, and they, they, they have super six later. But whichever way you want to do it, but I just want to look at, let's meet up with the calendar of CAF. If important. you want to play CAF Champions League, CAF Confederation, not the one that will be selecting team, and others will not be happy. They already fight for it. They fought for it. They, they decided, okay, these first four are the ones that actually qualify. They are going for the Champions League and CAF Confederation. Or, okay, these first three, the winner of uh, ITO Cup, that's yes. the FA Cup, FA will Cup. go to make the second <laughs> uh, team that will play in the CAF Confederation. So, if we do the, the right thing, I think our football will see go plays. And looking at the three eyes you mentioned, when it comes to the 20 teams participating, like rightly mentioned that Raymond Star seems to be the only uh, privately right. owned uh, club, uh, is high time, because if you, if you if actually rotate the back the hand of the clock, you check that in the 80s, what made Nigerian MPFL to very thick was because of the fact that, in fact, there was, I don't think there was a state, maybe, uh, <laughs> the Kano Pillars came around 1990 or thereabouts. Uh, there was no state that could say, okay, this is our own team. Sure. Everything was, in fact, 100% private. But now reverse is the case. So if there is anything that we can do to get, okay, investors come. I know the, f the biggest fear for investors is uh, if I invest my money, what do I get? The incentive, how, how does it come in? <clears throat> when I put the infrastructure and also I put the money there to do everything, how do I get my money back? That's the fear. The, we have so many people who really have the money to run for. But if the likes of uh, uh, Kunle Shoname, who owns Remo Star, could actually put his money into Remo Star, and right now having a, a club, they call Ferenci in we Portugal, see this, see this definitely. Thing. We have other Nigerians who could actually do that and make so much money through the world uh, uh, sports. But the fear that, huh, what if? Uh, I don't think the fear of what if is a problem. Mm. The first fear is the government, are they ready to let go of? Those uh, clubs. <coughs> the clubs. That because some of them they use it uh, for politics. Of course, so they, they, they leverage on it for they leverage it on politics. <laughs> That's the truth. So the first question is: Are they ready to let it go off? If they are not ready to let it go off, and that is where the first problem starts for. Then number two, the government also uh, they have to provide enabling environment, security-wise, for them to do that. If we have those two issues resolved, <laughs> believe me. There are a lot of money that we can make. Let me give you an example. How the justice for the clubs will be, will be done in, in Nigeria. Nigeria. And those companies... So that means mm. the companies will start employing people. We have people that will now become a wholesaler, retailers, going to those, uh, to those companies mm. to buy the shares. Those justice. So that the means we are, we are providing employment already. Number two, we are now going to uh, start um, having talent hunt in the sense that the attention of people will now be focused more on our league. Like we used to have in one year national, Leventis, Stationary Stores, Judas Berger, Judas Berger hmm. when we used to have the them, the all of them. When we used to have them, the same thing will happen this time around. So it is not about people are scared. Sincerely, we can make a lot, a lot, a lot of money when it comes to this, but are they ready to let go off? They're not ready to let go off. And those are most of the 
um, private owned clubs are in NN2. Uh, NN, that's NNL. the NNL. The second tier, that's of, the our second tier yes. of our league. Where we have 40 clubs. And from these 40 clubs, it's only four that will get promotion to play in the NPFL. So it is highly, very intensive. Look at what uh, in, uh, the, the, the four teams that are coming to play in the NPFL now. They are still state owned. Ekan, Ekan, mm -hmm. Baeza United, uh, Duma United. United. They are all government owned. Mm -hmm. Until when we look into that, sincerely, Bender Insurance. Bender insurance. Owned by so those I, 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 I don't think the investors, they are scared that if they will make their money, they will recoup their money in the first two, three years. They will get their money back because it's a profitable venture anywhere in the world. I hope we can go to Morocco, or let me say not Africa, we can go to Egypt, Algeria, and see how they, they run, run their, league. their league in there and come and copy, or I mean, do the same thing mm. here in this country. It is very possible that we can actually get those particular opportunities that Morocco really have right now. Morocco, Tunisia of this world, Egypt, Algeria. The North African side are really dominating when it comes to football development, not just for men, but also for women. Recently, news came out that Morocco will be spending a whooping $20 million on women football development. And if they can spend $20 million on women football, expect that the likes of ASFAR will never, ever go down when it comes to competing at the CAF Women Champions League. They always want to retain it. And you look at the men's football, Casablanca of Morocco, Ares Bakken, Alali, think of Zamalek, Think of uh, all the clubs from Tunisia, Algeria. They are dominant, except for South Africa, uh, trying to see how they can also uh, lock on against the North African side. But right now, when it comes to football, in fact, not only Nigeria, the whole West Africa needs to watch how they run football because really West African football clubs are not having it easy when it comes to the continental inter-club competition. Well, we hope that we get it right this time around. Well, let's look at it. Maybe the IMC, the MPFL, the NFF, they will sit down and just follow all the plans that need to be followed for us to have a better side of running football in Nigeria. Now, we move away from MPFL. Let's talk about Women's Champions League. They played some yesterday and now they have some to play today. Right, as we speak right now, some will be coming up. Let's look at the Women's Champions League fixtures where Vlasnia and Femera will be taking on Chelsea, the blue. Yes, the women will be there to play against Vlasnia and Femera. PSG, Femenai, against Real Madrid, Femenico. You have uh, Roma, Femenai, against uh, Paul Tien of Austria. Uh, that will be another match. Wolfsburg, Lady of Germany, they will be playing against Czech Republic, Slavia, Prague. Who will, be hosting their, who will be hosting them over there at the Volkswagen Arena. Yes, uh, good one. All these matches will be coming up. Uh, tonight as we speak. Some are actually getting ready, like Chelsea. Will they be scoring tonight? Chelsea, uh, it, let's not look at what the men are doing. <laughs> the, the, the guys can actually do better. Uh, uh, okay. The ladies. Okay, um, I think there won't be any, any surprise when it comes to tonight's match also, just mm. like you witnessed yesterday also. But the one that will be more interesting is uh, between the uh, PSG and uh, the Real, Real Madrid. Real, Real Madrid, and that would be very, very interesting. That's the match of the That's day. That's match of the day. But for uh, for Chelsea and for Roma and for Wolfsburg, um, they, they will scale I'm expecting them to scale to scale through. But this is football where Saudi Arabia defeated Argentina, Argentina at the World Cup. And this is the same football <laughs> that the Argentina that were defeated in their first match. Now at the final. The final. Why the Saudi Arabia? They are already at home watching. Uh, it in maybe they should have swap position. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Saudi Arabia will be like, what? Why we go beat Argentina now? If they, if they can speak PG. <laughs> you know, and I, 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 I think that also helped the Argentines. Yes, it's for the it's action. For the yes. action in them that oh, that means it's uh, it's not going to be easy like we thought because before the before the competition, sincerely I predicted either Argentina or France Get to, to, the final. to win the World Cup. Now we are seeing both of them playing and the final so it's a very good one so then their match against Saudi Arabia is like wow an high opener for them to what say, are we wow, doing what is going on hmm. so we have to sit up so definitely let's see what happens tonight but I'm not expecting Chelsea Roma and then Wolfsburg to lose their match then between PSG and, and Real Madrid, Madrid 
it's going to be it's going to be very 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 close a very close tie there when it comes to women football really psg real madrid just like the way the men if you look at the santiago governor blue side against psg a tough one is going to be too when it comes to men but for the women well let, let's just call it a tiebreaker but for the other teams that will be facing let's say roma chelsea and wolfsburg they will also should be able to scale through looking at the way the women champions league will be going down tonight across different center in europe while we are still looking at that we quickly look at another story trending in the world of sport let's look at uh, uh, from the way it is uh, as we talk about that particular one there yes uh, we look at real madrid yes they actually signed a wonderful player his name is hendrick hendrick just at the age of 16 real madrid signed palmeiras won the kid for 72 million euro everything has been settled right now before it was uh, like a rumor, but right now. And the good thing about it is that the young lad, 16-year-old, told his parents, uh, well, I will not leave you, leave you guys out of poverty. News came out that the family were selling coffee at the railway. But he told the father that if we use football to leave them out of poverty, and really it has happened to so many South American uh, families, they've seen football as business. And right now, this wonder kid, 72 million euro. Let's look at the breakdown of that particular deal. 72 million euro for the breakdown of 16-year-old Hendrik joining Real Madrid 2024 from Palmeiras. Well, 35 million pound, uh, euro rather for the fixed fee, 25 million that, was, uh, that will be add-ons. 12 million pound euro in taxes. The contract extends from 2027 to 2030. Joining, he'll be joining them in 2024 when he turns 18. But he'll still be in Palmeiras now. So 2024, he will move to Real Madrid to start the business. Okay, um, a good one. Um, business uh, or life generally is all about risk. Mm. Because what I see Real Madrid doing is they are taking the risk. Serious risk. The way Real Barcelona, Barcelona took the risk of, for uh, Lionel Messi. Messi also, uh, it's a risk. What do I say is a risk? Um, currently, there is, uh, there is a law when it comes to f um, signing a foreign player from another country to come and play in the mm. home league. If you are not up to 18 years, the law forbids it. That is why it's still with his current club and he will play he's for the next two years. Two years. If he's um, if he's a Spanish for example now, sixteen years he can play with them in Spain. Mm -hmm. If it's uh, an English player in Premier League, if you are not up to eighteen you can play. But if you are from another country, you must reach that age 18. of eighteen. They don't allow a minor, a minor to come and play. That's the reason why he's staying for the next two years. Now, do they know what will happen to him in, in the next, next two years? years? That's, <laughs> that, do they know? That was the first that came probably to my mind. Probably he's going to up his game or his game is going to drop. To drop. Or injury or, or injury, what will happen. Or what will happen. Hmm. So that's why I said this is a risk, but a calculated risk. risk. And a good thing for the, Brazil, for the Brazil national team is that they are already building their team against the next World, World Cup. Cup. Before Real Madrid will go for him, they've done their homework very well. They've seen that for the past two, three years, he's not injury prone. Hmm. They've seen that, okay, his, uh, his progression has been on the positive side since they identified him. It's not something that they just wake up today, but they've been on this for a very long time before they finally signed the deal. I think it's a risk that is worth taking because he's 16 year old, he's 16 year old. Not like some of our players in Nigeria <laughs> that they will tell you that, not good that, that they will tell you that they are 16 years, and when they get it, they say, "Oh, come on, you're still young. Be watching your senior brother without knowing and that, that it's even the senior brother <laughs> that they should be looking, looking at." Oh so my that, goodness, that's actually the truth. So I think it's a risk that's worth taking, and I think it will yield mm. more. I hope it will yield the result. The Madrid is, I mean, looking for. 70 million pounds 72 72 sorry it's not a, it's not a joke it's right a now joke. as we speak right now this player is this costless you know it was when uh, neymar moved to barcelona before psg came to sign him sign for him, 200 yeah. this is the costless transfer from brazil direct from okay. brazilian league to any other league at yeah. 16 year old i wonder what this kid will be signing when he turns to 2025 or thereabout that's why they quickly <laughs> add that particular clause Extension from, from 2027 20, to 2030. 20, What's the way to go? So that means well, it's like his future has been mortgaged to Real Madrid. Seriously, <laughs> just like the way Lionel Messi, you know, you know, Real Madrid blame themselves for not coming for Messi. Messi. Somebody actually showed him to them, but they were like, that stunted growth. Uh, he doesn't have the normal growth or thereabouts. Though they, they got kind of uh, uh, not, to, they just left him, and Barcelona took it. It was a very tough risk. 
but it's favored and him. the talented growth is what really helped Barcelona because if you look at um, if you look at the Barcelona team of about six seven years ago Iniesta Xavi Messi, Messi. what is their height the same the thing. <laughs> all of them the are the same thing. so you can't find them on the ground always on the one we call short man there for here <laughs> <laughs> well good one for Real Madrid getting entries for 72 million euros he will be he will be actually joining them from 20 uh, 24 when he turns 18, and that was a big calculated risk, really. 2020, between now and 2024, a long time, anything can happen. But right now, 72 million euro, and right now the family, they are out of poverty, like the young lad told his parent, I will take you out of poverty, and it's happening. If you have, <laughs> if you have a footballer there, a boy or girl who knows how to tap football, better support him or her. Never, ever let that dream go down. You never can tell. It could be another Hendrick there. And now let's talk about a particular country where, well, they tried their best. They wanted to get to the semi-final. They couldn't. Talking about Portugal. Uh, Portugal right now, they actually said first themselves from their former coach uh, in the person of Fernando Santos. Yes, they part way with him right now. Portuguese Football Federation, PFF, right now separating that, yes, we don't want you anymore. Even though you won us UEFA Nations League, you won us uh, Euro, uh, we, are, we are happy. You've spent eight years, but right now it seems everything you know about football <laughs> has gone. Now, so it's better we just get a new person. And really, if you look at the man, he's really aging. Yeah, it is aging. It's not easy to be a coach, sincerely. Mm. It's when you are there at the touchline, you know what it takes. What it takes to be, yes. to be And look coach. at all the trophy you won for Portugal. Yeah, and especially when you are managing a brand mm. like Sir Ronaldo, and you have the courage to say, no, I'm not playing you today. Mm. And, and we, won, we won the match, and everybody applauded you. Wow, you've done a very good one, a very good move. And the next one, I didn't play you, and I lost the match. <laughs> and everybody started coming for me. Now, why will you bench <laughs> your star? So that, that, is, that, is just, that is just what I think happens to him. Mm. But I don't really understand the reason why it will be waiting for him to decide before he resign. Yes, absolutely. I'm no longer uh, moving forward. At the not moving, exactly. Just, just and, you, you like and, you, and you've already won them what they've never won before. before. So that means if you have two trophies. These are, the, these are the type of coaches that Nigerians should be going to look out for because these are the coaches that have done something. Well, I don't think Nigeria can pay this man. Uh, we need two trophies for uh, Portugal right now. It's not as if we don't have the money. If you remember okay. what NFF okay. said, we have the money. Thank, NFF you, for, said, thank you for clarifying among that. Among the people that came for interview, <laughs> that Pizarro's price was <laughs> the best. <laughs> and if you are in the market buying something, which, which price better pass? That, you know, there's a way... Uh, there's no way you, there's no way you can separate our own culture from whatever we are doing one way or the other just like we are infusing whenever you speak english no matter how good the, the real african in you the real nigerian you will still go back to that okay if for example you find an african abroad anywhere he is no matter no matter how uh, posh that your culture will still come that's not that's no not, what, what i'm, what I'm saying is what i'm saying is the fact that LNFF said, okay, among all the, all the uh, candidates that we interviewed, Pizarro was the cheapest. That <laughs> was the affordable, Sincerely. most affordable. And now, looking at this matter, Coach Portugal winning two trophies, the Euro and also the UEFA you know, Nations League for Portugal. I don't think they want to pay such an amount. Okay, now you said something that is very interesting now. Mm. You said, not that we don't have the money, we have the money. That's the truth. So the issue of them saying affordability is a problem, mm. you shouldn't be looking at affordability. You should be looking at the quality of what the person will bring on board. And the reason why they, they are looking at affordability is because of what will go back to their own pocket. <laughs> that is the reason why they are looking for affordability. And that's why I said Pizarro is the cheaper, is the affordable. And is it even good for them to come out and tell us <laughs> is that the reason why I'm giving you this? It's even is funny that, you know, at times when you look at all these things, the Pizarro himself, to me, believe you me, the man himself is a joker. You know why I call him a joker? While you look at, first of all, when he came, when he came to Super Eagles, after that issue with Eguabu, and they said, okay, wait, when, let's see what will happen at the World Cup or whatever, and we couldn't qualify for World Cup, and they brought him, and you still came. Some coach will be like, I wanted to come. You guys had a deal with me. Then you say I should go. I'm not. I, do you know how many countries that are actually looking for my signature? Okay. Now you've answered the question. Mm. You've answered the question yourself. You said some coaches. It's not a coach. It's a trainer. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're talking about coach, you should not mention him as a coach. Because, because I still don't understand because why because we have like a Lohan Blanc. A coach, will, sign him. a coach will have something to prove that 
I have won this, I have done this, mm. I have a template. So I think the issue of Tesero or whatever, so I think for him, uh, he shouldn't have, he shouldn't have, I mean, allow the Federation to, to start in. He should have just done the right thing by just resigning and leave with, Honorably. His, uh, with, with his honor. But nevertheless, you're still going to get a club because he has of done course. something. He has done, he has done something. something. He has done well for Portugal there. Well, before we go quickly, let's run through two stories there. Everton in pole position to sign Ayas forward, Mohamed Kudus. Kudus, fantastic player for uh, his club, Ayas. But right now at the World Cup, he was able to showcase some talent. And right now, Kudus will be the player that Everton, they really want to get him. Right, That player is outstanding for himself and also for Ghana. Now, the last one says Chelsea. Chelsea are on the verge of signing Cote d'Ivoire forward. David Datro Fofana from Molde. Molde is a club in Norway. And right now, they want to get another Fofana. Well, I hope this one will be a good one. Okay, I wish them all the best. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the truth. Oh my if, if that is what their problem is now, let them, for go, for let, let, them, let, them, let them go for it. You have one for Fana that is for Fanny. You. <laughs> now you want to go for another for Fana. But I'm do, sure. How do you want to sure, go with uh, it? It's Harry, uh, it's, sorry, Graham Potter. I went to say Harry Potter. Graham Potter yeah, yeah, <laughs> saw Harry something Potter good in him because of his magic one. Uh, this player <laughs> is a, an outstanding player from Norway. Okay, what I think the Chelsea team needs to do, one of the mistakes they made, mm. or the new owner made, was allowing most of the uh, sports directors that they have at the club to go and to leave. So they have new people that they don't even understand what football is all about. So these are the people that are running Chelsea's football currently right now. Going for Fofana, this one, I don't really understand what, what they've seen in him. But like I said, we wish them all the best. When a club like uh, Everton, they are looking for Mohamed Kudus to sign. Established player. Yeah, but no they, player. Uh, this guy could be an outstanding, very outstanding player. Yeah, you, know, you, know, there's a, you know there's a saying that uh, it's Saturday that will good. You start seeing it from Thursday. You mean if I order for final pass on this for final? <laughs> 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 that would be it on 360 Sport. Wishing Chelsea all the best as they love to get for final players. Let's see what this particular for final will be offering Chelsea. Thank you very much for coming on the show. It's my pleasure, Adeney. Thanks for having me. And from myself to you there, I just want to tell you that sport is always business and fitness. Thanks for watching. I am Adeney Ajishafeh.